Nephi, we're here, Justin said, the moment the carriage stopped in front a large building that reminded me of those rich boarding schools back in the human realm. When I first woke up that morning I felt so many different emotions. The night before I had dreamed sex with someone who wasn't Liam, only for Liam to show up in my dreams and accuse me of ruining our relationship and not too long after, talked to my mother who until recently I thought died in her bedroom last year. Both events were unexpected. However, they both left me with this confused feeling about Liam and my future. I had told my mother that I had chosen to be with Tomo, which was true, because it was obvious that Liam was done with me. But after that conversation with my mother, I wasn't sure about anything. Nephi, did you hear me, we're here? Justin repeated. He was now standing outside the carriage, looking at me, with this confused look on his face, while Sun gave his skin this angelic glow. Sorry, I said as I got out the carriage. It wasn't my first time riding in a carriage. When I was younger, I got to ride in Cinderella's carriage at Disney, but that carriage ride was nothing compared to this one. For starters, the horses were flying unicorns. Yes, actual unicorns. All my life I had dreamt about unicorns. I told my father that I wanted one for my sixth birthday, which I never got by the way and I always wore clothes with unicorns on them. And as a teenager I never lost my love for the gorgeous creature, and now after so many years of wanting and believing I'd see one, Two of them flew my carriage to this magical school in the fairy realm. It was amazing. Where is your head? Justin asked as we walked up the long steps towards the school. I just smiled, shook my head and said, Just nervous. I have never gone to a magic school before, nor did I ever plan on going to one. Of course, this is all new to you, but don't you worry. You'll get used to it now come on. I need to introduce you to the headmistress of this academy. He said, as he escorted me up the stairs, where an older woman with long brown hair and oil skin stood. She was wearing this long pale blue robe, and with some thick glasses that made her brown eyes look ten times bigger. Good morning, your highness, the woman said with a deep bow and in a slow, deep voice. We are so happy that you will be joining us here at Aurora. You know everyone of your siblings have been here and each of them graduated at the top of their classes. She explained. Good to know, I said, suddenly feeling intimidated. Right this way, she said, as she opened her arm, as if telling us to go inside. I swallowed hard, then followed my brother into the building. The moment I entered I noticed the faint smell of dahlias. The inside was quite colorful, but it looked a lot like a normal high school, with the one exception being the massive floating ball of fire that I found myself staring at. It was something about it that felt so familiar and I suddenly felt this pull in my heart that made me tear up a bit. Oh, I see you recognize your mother's flame, the headmistress said. I looked back and forward between my brother and the woman. My mother? I asked. Yes, she represented us in our annual magic games and took first place. Nowadays any mention of her name is taboo, you understand. However, the king allowed us to keep this as a reminder of strength. She said. Oh, mother is extremely powerful. I said, more to myself. Beyond. Justin said, Come along, your highness, we have to get you to your class, which has already started. She said, Of course. I said, as I followed her and my brother down the hall, passing up artifact after artifact. There were pictures of every member of my family. Well, everyone expect my bio my anyway. 
Even my mom's sister and aunt's sister pictures were still on the wall, but my bio mother's picture had been replaced by the current queen, and for the first time since coming there, I really wanted to know more about my mother. Now, there are rules that everyone here must abide, by nothing too big, be on time, you can't use any of the spells you learn against other students. No going on the basement floor unless asked to do so by a teacher, and finally you cannot bring anyone on campus that is not a student. There were a few lower classmen who attempted to come to our school, and we don't want a repeat of that this is a prestigious academy. All the young fairies here are the future leaders of our society, she said. I just smiled pretending to care about what she said. I didn't know anyone there, expect the people in the castle and Tamo, so it wasn't like I planned to break any of those rules anyway. Of course, I said. Great, now your highness, you may go, and princess your class is right through that door. I understand that you grew up in the human world, so you will be behind on your studies, but don't worry I'm sure you are a rare talent like your father. She said. I smiled, then said, How old are the people in there? Are they teens like me? I know it was a stupid question, but I needed to know what I was walking into. Yes, they are all about your age teenagers as the humans call you, but of course unlike them, you won't reach adulthood until you're much older. Are there any other questions your highness? She asked. Of course. I said, unsure of how to feel. I then turned towards the big brown doors and pushed them open. The setup looked more like an intimate gathering with ten or so friends, instead of a classroom, and of course everyone's eyes were glued towards me. Never in my life had I ever been the new girl, and because I was the new girl the teacher had me stand in front of the class while she introduced me. Everyone in class seemed nice, or shall I say interested in learning more about the princess, who lived in the human world, and was the reason the king and former queen split. I was then told to sit next to some girl, who reminded me a lot of Taylor back, when I considered her my friend. She had highlights, glowing grey eyes and loved fashion, which oddly enough their clothes was rather cute. Okay, settle down class. I know everyone is excited to see the princess and learn more about her, but the class must go on. Now, then, last week we worked on basic fire magic. Does anyone want to give it a try? The teacher, who reminded me of my favorite elementary school teacher, asked, and of course, no one's hand went up. Suddenly, I felt this strong pull coming from the hallway, and I knew Tama was there. I was tempted to go greet him, but fought against it. It really sucked not having control over my body when it came to him. It also didn't help that I had a dream that we slept together the night before. No one. Okay, Titus come up here and show us what you've learned. He said, to this guy who was dressed like an emo, something I never thought I'd see in this world. Titus sighed, then walked towards the desk where a candle sat, then pointed a finger at it. A second later, his finger was on fire, but instead of screaming, he used it to light the candle, then blew out the fire. What the hell? I whispered to myself while everyone else laughed. That's Titus, he's always like that. The off-brand version on Taylor said. Okay. I said. Great, well at last this time, you didn't set your entire arm on fire. The teacher said. Whatever. Titus said, before walking back to his sit and sitting next to another student, dressed in emo. Okay, anyone else? The teacher asked, and again no one raised their hand. Maybe they just need a demonstration, Tamu said as he entered the room, and my heart started to flutter.
Meanwhile, the entire class went nuts. Prince, Tomochi, what brings you into our class? Don't you have studies of your own? The teacher asked with this delightful high-pitched voice. Oh my God, he's so gorgeous you are so lucky, the girl said, practically drooling over Tomo. At first, I was going to ask her how she knew, but then I remembered that my father announced it to the world. Right lucky, I said with a real smile. I was just passing through, plus I had to check on my navy. It, it is her first day. He said and everyone started to swoon. I just blushed and lowered my head. Of course. But a demonstration would be greatly appreciated. The teacher said with pride. Tomo smiled, then picked up the candle, blew on it, and instantly it lit up. Excellent. This is one of the basic techniques of candling lighten. And as always you've performed it well would you mind showing the class a more expect level? The teacher asked in awe, like the rest of my classmates. Not a problem, Tomu said, then snapped his fingers and all the candles in the room were lit. Everyone clapped and cheered. I clapped as well, that was until I felt the strongest tug on my heart. Instantly I turned my head towards the window, but saw nothing. It couldn't be him. He wouldn't come. He dumped me. Why would he be here? I thought while my heart was beating so fast, I couldn't hear anything else. Liam. I thought as a tear stung my eyes, but no word came back. I tried to forget it and focus my attention back on the scene in front of me. Tomo attempting to impress me, while everyone else in the room fawned over him. But I couldn't. Every inch of me was ready to jump out the window and search for Liam. Princess Nefertiti, would you like to give it a try? The teacher asked, returning my attention back to the room. I don't know if I can. I said, trying my best to stay in that seat because I knew if I got up I would run out the room and into the forest. Larry, John, I thought. I didn't think they were there, but it was worth a shot. Nonsense, you're royal, it's in your blood, and with your navy it here, it will be even easier. The teacher assured me. I felt this pain in my chest, the moment he said that word and this need to scream out no. But I held it in and instead found myself walking towards the front of the room. The teacher then handed me a candle. Okay, now what? I asked. Close your eyes and picture the flame. Tommy said. I closed my eyes and attempted to do as he said. However, instead of seeing the flame, I saw Liam. He was in the forest wearing a black cloak headed towards me. Liam I thought again, then opened my eyes and saw the entire room was on fire. Well, someone said, sorry, I can't control my magic, I said, and the teacher snapped his fingers instantly putting out the fire. I see okay, go take a seat, we will have to limit your abilities for a while until you have better control, the teacher said and I remembered the bracelet Liam's mother gave me that was supposed to help limit my powers. I sighed then lowered my head. However, instead of walking to my seat, I found myself turning towards the door. Nephi, your seat, Tommy said. Right, I said, then headed back towards my seat. Thank you so much for your help, Prince Tomochi. The professor said, My pleasure. If you need any more help, let me know. And with that he left and class continued. However, I had checked completely out. I didn't know if it was a dream or real. But in that moment I didn't care. Because if Liam was there, and he truly came to see me, then I owed it to him to find him. So what was it like living with the humans? This beautiful girl named Carmen, who I had learned was a duchess, asked over lunch. 
The moment class was dismissed, I was escorted to the lunchroom, which was a beautiful garden in the back of campus. There were flowers for miles and trees as well. A truly beautiful sight. However, I couldn't concentrate on any of that because I could still feel Liam close by. The night we parted ways our bond was incredibly strong, but now it felt even more intense. It was like a longing to get back to the part of me that I had lost, only I wasn't sure if that feeling stemmed from me missing Liam or him actually being there. Nuffy, Tomo, who was sitting on the side of me said, the table we were sitting at was pretty large and there were at least ten of us, including Taylor and that girl who reminded me of her. Sorry, I spaced out for a minute. What did you ask? I said, trying to ignore my thoughts and that feeling. What was it like living with the humans? Carmen repeated. It must have been horrible. This guy named Ben, that was also some royal said and the table agreed. Actually, I had an amazing life before finding out who I was. I said, turning my attention towards the pastries on my plate. Apparently besides weird food, fruits and vegetables these people really loved sweets. Really. Amazing. What's so amazing about the human world? The girl sitting next to Taylor whose name escaped me asked. Lots of things. My favorite was traveling and going to this place called Disney World. I said, remembering my ninth birthday party. My parents had decided to take my entire class to Disney, which included Liam. I remember being so happy I couldn't sleep the night before. And when we got there I made sure to follow Liam to all the rides he got on. Just thinking about him made my heart hurt, mostly because I was sure he was in that realm, only I couldn't go to him, and even if I did, I had no idea how he would react, especially if he knew I had dreamed sex with Tomo. I know it didn't really happen, but the fact that I dreamt about it was still bothering. What's Disney World? Carmen asked. It's hard to describe. Let's just call it paradise for children and adults who likes Disney. I said with a shrug. Oh so besides that, how did it feel to be reunited with your navy at? I know if it was me, I would have probably cried. The girl next to Taylor said. I shrugged. I wasn't happy and I didn't cry. I said nonchalantly and everyone gasped and Tomo placed his hand on mine, and like always I felt this spark, only it wasn't as strong as before. How could you not be happy to see your navy at? Clearly you're playing with us. One of the other girls said. No, she's not I tried to set them up in the human world, but she wasn't budging she was in a relationship with some guy, but when your bond is as strong as theirs. It's only a matter of time before you get together aren't they perfect for each other, Taylor said, throwing in her two cents, where it wasn't wanted and everyone smiled brightly at her comment, while I just sat there with a fake smile on my face. I wanted to call her out on her bullshit, but didn't want to make Tomo look bad, or bring up Liam in the presence of fairies, who hated werewolves, so I said. If you would all excuse me, I think I want to go for a walk before class starts. I said as I stood up. Would you like me to come with you? Tomu asked. I shook my head. No, it's okay. You have fun with your friends. I'm sure they missed you. I said, determined to get away from all of them, so I could find Liam. No, I insist, the last thing we want is for you to get lost on your first day. The king wouldn't like that, Tomo said, reminding me of my role in the kingdom. I sighed then said, sure, it was nice talking to you all. And with that, I turned and walked towards the direction I was being drawn to, with Tomo behind me. I'm sorry about my friends and Taylor, 
I don't know why she said that. He said, the moment we were further away from his friends and other people. Don't worry about it your friends were cool. Besides the whole no peasant for friends thing and as for Taylor, I don't pay attention to anything she says anymore. I said, with my eyes focused on the road ahead of me. You know, I think you should give Taylor another chance. You two were so close before. Tomu said. Never, I can't trust her, and I don't want to talk about her. So can we change the subject? I asked, over the conversation and trying to focus on my reason for being there. However, now it seemed pointless because Tama was with me, and if Liam was there, I knew something bad was going to happen. Right okay. How are you enjoying your first day of school? He asked. It's weird I'm supposed to be on summer break, but learning magic is fun. I said, nonchalantly. I'm glad you like it I know back in the human realm, you are a college student. But now it's like you are starting all over. He said, nonchalantly. He was standing a few inches away from me, but I could barely sense his presence or our bond that had been so potent and strong earlier. Yeah, I'm an adult in the human realm. In this one I'm still a child. I said, annoyed with my new role in life. Yeah. Adult age doesn't start until you're 30 and even that is more like being an 18-year-old, but by then you will be old enough to marry, he said, causing me to stop in my tracks and my heart to sink in my chest. Luckily I'm still young, so we don't have to talk about that, I said, as I continued walking faster towards an unknown location, but feeling like I was getting closer to Liam somehow. You're right, instead of talking about something like that, how about we just date? He said. Again I stopped walking and suddenly felt this anger and jealousy spring up in me. I was tempted to slap him, for even suggesting that, but instead I said. Huh. Yeah, you know how I feel about you, and I know you're still confused about your feelings. And I don't want to rush you into anything, which is why I'm suggesting dating as alternative. You never know, you might fall in love with me too. He said. His suggestion was reasonable. However, before I could answer I felt what I believed was Liam move in the opposite direction. So without thinking I ran after him. Nephi come back. Tomu said. But it was too late. I couldn't stop my feet from running in that direction. Liam, where are you? I know you're here. I thought, and again it was silence. A second later, Tomo grabbed me, and what I believed was Liam's scent disappeared. No, where'd you go? I said, as tears rolled down my face. Nephi, what's wrong? Tomo asked with a hint of fear in his eyes. Liam. I started to say, and could finally feel only Tomo's presence and our bond. Liam, what about him? He's in the human realm, there is no way he would come here, you know he already chose Sam. Tomo said angrily. I know, but I felt him. I felt him since earlier it's so much. I said, then broke down in Tomo's arms. Listen to me. Tomu said, as he lifted my head, so I could look into his eyes. He's not here, he's never been here. He doesn't care about you, Nephi. I do, I do anything for you. You know that. You have to let him go. You have to stop chasing this ghost that only wants to destroy us. He said, You're right, I'm sorry, I don't know why I felt him here, or been feeling all day. It might just be my nerves from everything that's happened, but I promise I will do my best to forget about him. But I just need time. Can you give me time, please? I asked, feeling stupid and sad that Liam wasn't there. Yeah, I can do that. Take all the time you need. I won't rush you. He said sweetly.
I had always thought of him as a kind person, and I really liked him, or at least I wanted to like him, but it was hard, especially after everything that I had been through and the love I still had for Liam. Then, there was that weird dream the night before that began with us having sex only to end with Liam showing up, accusing me of betraying him. Everything was confusing and at that moment, I needed time to clear up the matters in my heart and head, before I could give my heart away again. Thank you, I said, with a soft smile. He smiled back then said, You don't have to thank me, I told you, I would do anything for you Nephi, that's how much I love you. He said, I didn't say it back, because I couldn't, I may have liked him, but I knew it would take a long time. Before the words I love you came out of my mouth, Liam, the moment I stepped out of that portal, I felt Nephi's presence. It was a lot stronger than before and even more intense, so much so that my wolf started to go crazy. The sky is pink, and there are two suns. How is that possible? Is this not Earth? I heard Dom say, in amazement. Only I ignored him, and started walking in the direction, I knew I'd find Nephi. Liam wait up. Do you know where you're going? Lara asked, from a few paces behind me. Towards Nephi. I answered, as I walked through the forest on the dirt road. There was nothing in front of me but trees. No buildings of any kind nor were there markers for the road, but it didn't matter. My wolf knew where she was and if he didn't the intensity of our bond would lead me straight to her. How do you even know it's this way? And what is your plan when you find her? Dome asked. I can feel her not only that, but our bond feels a lot stronger. I noticed it when I saw her at the house a few days ago. I said, of course, it did. Which means that if you can sense her, she can sense you. Lara said. That's assuming she notice it. Remember what's his face is with her. And she did admit that she feels drawn to you both. Dom said. Reminding me of my target. Yeah, I remember what she said. But hey race the thing. I know for a fact that the bond we have is deeper than whatever he thinks they have. I told you when we first met that she was my mate. She's marked, remember? I reminded him of the mark. I gave Nephi as he handed me a cloak. What's this for? I asked as I examined it but kept walking. Something to hide yourself with. We don't want to draw attention to ourselves. Lara said. Yeah, I remember, although I thought it faded. Dom said. Why would you think that? You know that mark doesn't fade. Lara said, echoing my annoyance. Yeah, but I haven't seen it and I checked when I was searching for the mark. Dom said, reminding me of another reason I was pissed at him. You wouldn't have seen it. She covers it with makeup. Lara explained. Then does that mean she covered the fey mark too? Dom asked. No. That's something that can only be covered with magic, and since Nephi grew up with a glamour spell cast on her, no one would have seen it. As for the mark Liam gave her, it wasn't glamoured, because she doesn't know how to use that spell, so I helped her cover it with makeup. Lara explained. Oh, Dom said. Liam. Neff's voice rang in my ear. She senses me. I said with a huge smile. I know she just called me. Lara said. Me too. Dom echoed. Don't say anything. We don't want anyone alarmed to our presence, Liam. Lara ordered. I know. I promise I won't say anything, but at least now I'm sure we are headed in the right direction. I said with a huge smile on my face. We walked for what seemed like hours in the direction I had chosen. Dom was complaining, and Lara was pretty much talking about what I should and shouldn't do when I saw Nephi. 
I wasn't listening. Instead, I allowed myself to think about what I would say when I saw her. I didn't even know why I was there. I had made the decision not to see her. To marry Sam, like everyone wanted and live the life, they chose for me in order to protect Nephi. But when that asshole showed up in my woods and announced his engagement to my mate, I made up my mind to find her and bring her back. The only problem was, there was no way, but that didn't stop me from planning. Then when my siblings found the portal, everything changed. I still had no idea what I would say to her when I saw her, but in that moment the only thing that mattered was seeing her. Suddenly I felt our bond grow stronger, she was close, but she wasn't alone. That asshole was with her, and my wolf started to go crazy. He wanted to come out and rip Tomo's head off for being next to Nephi, but I fought him back by balling up my fist. She's up ahead, and she's not alone, Dom said, as if I didn't know. Thanks, Captain Obvious. I said annoyed. What should we do? Laurie asked. Hide. I said, and we moved towards a large tree and hide behind it. I then closed my eyes and focused on Nephi. I wanted to tell her that I was there, but in the end decided to just listen to their conversation instead. How are you enjoying your first day of school? The asshole asked. It's weird I'm supposed to be on summer break, but learning magic is fun. She said nonchalantly. Hearing her voice again, after what happened was enough to send my heart in a race. It was just as sweet and beautiful as I remembered. I'm glad you like it I know back in the human world. You are a college student, but now it's like you are starting all over. The asshole said, nonchalantly. Yeah, I'm an adult in the human realm, in this one I'm still a child. She said, with a hint of annoyance in her voice. Yeah, adult age doesn't start until you're 30 and even that is more like being a in ye are weldy. But by then you will be old enough to marry. The asshole said, pissing me off. If it was one thing I hated the most, it was that asshole telling my girlfriend that they were getting married. Luckily I'm still young, so we don't have to talk about that. Nephi said, trying to avoid the topic and I felt myself relax. At least she wasn't into marrying that asshole. Then he said, you're right, instead of talking about something like that, how about we just date? And suddenly I felt this anger and jealousy spring up in me, and I found myself moving from my hiding spot towards them with the only thing on my mind being to kill Tomo and take Nephi. All of a sudden, I stopped moving, not on my own, but was frozen. The next thing I felt was my body being pulled backwards, with my siblings running towards me. What the hell? Let go of me, I ordered. But they didn't. Instead, I felt myself get sleepier and the last thing I heard before passing out was Nephi voice saying, Liam, where are you? I know you're here. Nephi. I screamed as I popped up and opened my eyes, only to find myself sitting on the ground, next to my unconscious siblings. I looked up at the sky and realized that I was back in our realm. What the hell? How did we get back? I asked no one, and disappointed that I had missed my chance of seeing Nephi. I brought you back. A disappointed voice, that sounded like Mr. Greystone said. I then looked towards him and saw him standing not two feet in front of me. Hey! I asked, confused that a werewolf could use magic to pull us out of another realm. I have friend who owed me a favor. He said, in that same disappointing tone. Why did you do it? I was close to reuniting with her. If you would have waited one more minute, I would have. I started to say, with so much anger in me. You would have been killed by the Fae. What were you thinking by going over there? 
Did you have a plan? Mr. Greystone asked. In this hostile, fatherly tone, I had grown used to over the years. I sat there dumbfounded. Of course, I didn't have a plan. I just really wanted to see her, even if it was from afar. I don't know. I admitted. He sighed then said, I understand how you feel, more than anyone. I've raised that girl from the day she was born, and I've loved her sister long before that, but as it stands, I can't see either of them and neither can you there is too much at stake, and as you know, we are about to enter a major war. You have to be sharp and smart. You can't just cross the realms without a plan. The best thing for you to do is go back and play your role. Mr. Greystone said, I don't want that role I'm tired of playing. I just want to be with Nephi. I said, feeling defeated. I know it's hard and the last thing I want is for you to give up your mate. But at this time, you have no choice. You have to let her go. Mr. Greystone said, echoing everyone in my pack. I can't do that I won't do that could you let go of Isis? I asked heartbroken and angry, while fighting back my wolf's hatred for the man I admired. I'm not saying forever, just right now. I told you yesterday that a storm was brewing that would spill over from Nephis realm to ours. I don't know when it will happen. But I know it will be soon and when it happens, Nephi will need you, and the fact that the Weirs are planning on attacking the Forest of Dreams soon, makes it all the more urgent for you to continue to play your role. He said, as if he were talking in code, and I suddenly understood. You want me to act as a spy? I asked in whisper. The good thing was, my siblings were still out cold so they couldn't hear our conversation. The bad thing was, I wasn't sure I could do what he asked. In a way, I don't have any plans on hurting any of our people. I just want to slow them down before they have the chance to enter that realm. He said, Why me? I asked, feeling helpless and irritated that instead of getting back what was mine, I was asked to play the role of a spy in my community. Because I trust you and I know how much you love my daughter, I also know that you are loyal to your pack, so you will do everything you can to protect them both. He said, If the Weirs enter the Forest of Dreams before the threat has been neutralized, many people will die and not just the Fey, but the Weirs as well. He said, sternly, How, if we have something that can stop their magic? I asked confused. I know what you have I gave it to Nephi for safekeeping, because I knew what would happen if someone in the council got their hands on it. He said, as he balled up his fist in what looked like anger. What do you want me to do? I asked unsure if this was the right course, but deciding to hear him out, if it meant seeing Nephi again. I want you to go back home, train, and do as your father says. When the times comes I'll call you. He said. My father wants me to marry another and lead a section of the pack with her as my Luna. He says it's training for me before stepping into his shoes. I said, biting back my anger. Although the wedding and the position wasn't supposed to take place for a couple of years. At least not until after I graduated from college and had more training. But the idea of marrying Sam over Nephi was unimaginable and made me sick to my stomach. He wouldn't marry you off now. So that's not important your training is. The war has already started and it's only a matter of time. Before it escalates into something big. So before that happens, I need you to train, get stronger. Accumulate followers, so we can take on this threat. Then when it's over you can be with Nephi again. He said. That's if she still accepts me after what I've done. I thought but asked. Who is the real enemy? Just to change to change the subject. The real enemy is the current queen of the Phoenix tribe. 
she is working with a few weirs including Sliver Streak, to rid the world of our kind and the Fae. I don't know why, but I do know that she has an army that far exceeds our own. The only way to stop her is to work together. However, everyone is too stubborn to do that, but maybe you could change their mind when the time is right. He said. The queen. Why? Is Nafi in danger? I asked, feeling an urgency to cross the realms again in order to save Nafi. At the moment, no, but soon. She is protected by her father's army, and she is currently engaged to her Naviate. He said, pissing me off. He is not her Naviate, or whatever the hell you call it. I am. I said, sternly. I know like I told you, I noticed it when you were younger you may not remember this, but you and that boy met when you were kids. He said. What? Why? I asked baffled. It wasn't on purpose, the goal was to see if Nephi responded to him, the way he responded to her. He said. Why? Because he wanted to see her and Isis was curious about their bond. But then when he showed up she ignored him and walked straight to you. She even asked if she could marry you when she grew up and that was when she was six years old. He explained, and I smiled. So even though she is my true mate, you still want me to let her go. I asked heartbroken and angry. For now, if by the time all this is over and you two still recognize each other as mates, I will help you be together but it all depends on you helping me, save everyone. He said. I lowered my head and allowed his proposition to wander around in my head. There was no doubt in my mind that Nephi belonged to me, and if there was a chance to get back to her fast enough, I had to take it. So after ten minutes of silence I said. You got a deal. As I stuck out my hand. A wide smile spread across his lips as he said. Thank you, Liam. You have no idea what this means. He said. Just as my siblings started to come to. I will see you later. He said, before disappearing. What happened? Why is there only one son? I heard Dom. Ask in the same shock and disappointment as me. We're back. I explained. Hey, Laurie asked. I don't know, but we should get back to the house. I said, changing the subject, not ready to tell them about the conversation I had with Mr. Greystone, mostly out of fear of what they might do and that the conversation would get back to our father. That's a good idea. The sun is starting to set. So did you want to try again? Laurie asked sympathetically. I shook my head. No, we have too much to do. There is a war coming and as much as I miss her, I know my place and you guys are right. I have to let her go. I lied. I had no plans of letting her go, but Mr. Greystone was right. If I wanted to get her back, I had to be smart, and that included following my father's orders, and acting, like the perfect son, he wanted me to be. Are you sure? Dom asked skeptical. I shrugged. Yesterday after the meeting, I decided to take everyone's advice, and let her go, because I knew that even though I loved her and she's my mate, there was no way that we could be together. Then you two showed me that door and gave me hope only for us to be pulled out by an unknown force. That just proves that despite my feelings everyone is right. We can't be together. I said, sternly. I didn't mean a word I was saying. But it didn't matter. With everything that was going on, it was the only role that I could play if I wanted to get Nephi back. Sorry about this. But I'm glad you understand, Dom said. I just shrugged and started walking towards the car, ready for whatever came next. Nephi, how was your first day? Justin asked the moment I got in the carriage. 
I shrugged. Besides accidentally setting the classroom on fire it was fine, I said, still out of it from earlier. I knew it was impossible for Liam to be there, and even if he was, I highly doubted he'd come to talk to me, at least I wanted to doubt it. As bad as it sounded, a part of me was still holding on to hope that he would show up at the castle. Apologize for what happened then we'd run away together. Sure I'd feel bad for Tomo, but I can't help how I felt. You set the classroom on fire. Justin asked, more amused than upset. Yeah, it was an accident. The teacher told us to light the candle. I wanted to sit that one out, but he and Tomo. I started to say, Prince Tomochi was in your class. He asked with delight, making it clear that he was Team Tomo with Tomo's deranged cousin. Yeah, he walked in and volunteered to show us how to light the candle after some kid lit his finger on fire in order to light it. I explained, oh how did you feel when he was there? He asked out of the blue, what do you mean? I asked playing dumb. Of course I knew what he meant, I just wanted to pretend like I didn't. Like did you sense his presence, feel drawn to it at any time? He asked, in what sounded like a hopeful tone. I always feel that way when he's around. I admitted, with a shrug. That's great the day you were born, he knew instantly who you were to him, and has been miserable ever since you separated. He said, instantly making me feel guilty that I wasn't miserable, nor was he a factor in my mind. I didn't even remember meeting him until my mother's sister told me about it, because that was how irrelevant he was to me. Right, is it possible to have more than one Naviate? I blurted out without meaning to, but my stomach was in knots and my head kept thinking back to the conversation. I had the other night with my mother's sister. It was going to be weird, calling her by her first name, after calling her mom for so long. He looked at me baffled. No, each of us have one navy and the moment you meet them you know, it's like an instant connection, like you had with Tomochi. He said. I sat back and thought about everything. The first time I met Tomochi, I didn't feel anything for him, I didn't even notice him. Now Liam was different, even as a little girl, before I even knew what love was. I felt like I needed to be by him all the time, like we were made for each other. As for Tomo, the only time I truly felt anything for him was whenever Liam wasn't there, and after I awakened as a fairy, I started to feel it more. But it wasn't nearly as powerful as what I felt when I saw Liam again. Or what I felt earlier, when I felt Liam in the forest, or I at least thought I felt him. If he wasn't here, then, I could feel his presence through worlds, and that wasn't good for a potential relationship. I let out a low sigh, then lowered my head. Why did you ask about having two naviates? Justin asked suddenly. I don't know if I should tell you. I said dryly. Does this have anything to do with your time back in the human realm? He asked, the moment the carriage pulled up to the castle. His voice was firm, but he didn't seem angry, just curious. I sighed then shook my head, while the footman opened the door. Yeah, I said, not even bothering to lie. Mostly, because I doubted I could get away with it. He was a lot like my parents back in the human realm. I could never lie to them and get away with it, no matter how hard I tried. I see, that explains the prince's expression when he first arrived. He said, as he placed his long finger on his chin. What expression? I said, feeling guilty for some reason. Like he lost his best friend. Justin said, before getting out the car. I let out a loud sigh then followed my brother out the carriage, making sure to take his hand as I got down.
tell me about this boy back in the human realm, he said, as we walked towards the castle. However, instead of walking right in we walked around, towards where I knew was the garden. I shook my head then said, you wouldn't like him. You're probably right, because I'm Team Tomo, but I still want to know why you are still thinking about this human when you are in a different realm and your navy it is here. He said reminding me of the conversation Taylor and I had when I thought she was my friend. He and I grew up together in this small town called Dawson City. It's in a country called Canada. I said, making sure to explain the geography before continuing. Oh childhood sweethearts. First love. He asked, with a soft smile. Not really childhood sweethearts. More like I had the biggest crush on him, and never told him until last year, after he confessed, he felt the same way, but was afraid to act. I said, with this slight smile on my face, as I remembered the happiest but craziest night of my life before everything went to hell. Oh, so the breakup is fresh, he said, calmly. Yeah, it's fresh. I said, as my mind went back to that night, I last saw Liam when he kissed Sam and dumped me after declaring us as enemies and her as his fianc -y. That pain hurt worse than anything. Well, I know it's hard to hear, but it was necessary. A relationship between us and humans are impossible. Plus what you felt for him wasn't real anyway. I'm sure you realized that the moment you awakened. Justin assured me. I shook my head. When I awakened, I felt an even stronger bond with him. It's a lot stronger than anything I've felt with Tomo. I admitted. That's odd. He said, before scratching his head. Who is this guy? I sighed, then walked away from him, then said softly. Someone I shouldn't be with. Obviously, but does he have a name? He asked. Can you help me forget him? I asked, changing the subject. I had learned that fairies had the ability to erase memories, and I knew that if I could forget about Liam completely, then I would be free to be with Tomo. That's not a problem. I just need to know his name. He said, nonchalantly. I closed my eyes then said, Liam Calhoun. Calhoun? As in, he asked with what sounded like disappointment in his voice. I shook my head yes. How could you fall in love with a where have you lost your mind? They are our enemy. He snapped. I know trust me I know better than anyone the hatred between our two clans. I said, remembering all those conversations about how bad the Fae were. Then why? He demanded. I didn't know I was Fay until a week ago, all that time. I thought I was were because the man who raised me was. I responded, through soft cries. Of course, mother did give you to him, when I begged her to give you to me. He suddenly stopped talking then turned his attention to my neck, his eyes focusing on the spot, right between my shoulder blades. Instantly his hand shot up to the very spot Liam had marked me almost a year ago and frowned. You've been marked. He growled, then removed his hand. I placed my hand on Liam's mark, then looked at the ground. We made it, I said as tears fell from my eyes, but I didn't feel guilt if anything I was just sad Liam wasn't there. A whir and a fae cannot mate. It's against every law and nature, but of course you didn't know that so I can't blame you, he said, turning his back to me. I'm sorry, was all I could think of to say, while well, my body started to shake with fear of what he might do to me. Surprisingly, he placed his hand on my shoulder, causing me to look up into his eyes, and all I saw was sympathy. Don't worry, I will take care of everything. He assured me, 
before turning his attention to my neck and placing his hand over my mark. Suddenly, I felt this warm, almost burning sensation in my shoulder. I started to scream, but it was stifled while images of me and Liam began to play in my mind, only they were going in reverse, slowly erasing one after the other, and I suddenly felt this pain in my chest, as if it were being ripped out, while this voice in my head screamed at me to make him stop. It was the same voice, I had heard when I awakened as a fairy, but it was too late, and the last thing I heard before passing out was my brother say, everything is going to be okay. Larry, I sat on the porch, watching our men train, for a war, I wasn't sure I wanted to be a part of anymore. All my life I had trained for the day that we would get rid of the Fey because of the threat that they supposedly were to our people and way of life. Now, I wasn't so sure. Sure there was a fraction of them trying to destroy us for some unknown reason, but not everyone was like that, especially Nephi. If anything she was the innocent victim in all of this, and yet everyone there was gong-ho on getting rid of her. Well not everyone, I could honestly say that no one in my family, wanted to cause any harm to the girl, including my father who had been indifferent about her from the beginning. The worst part was the pain this fighting was causing Liam. I know my parents refused to accept it. Hell in the beginning, I was skeptical about their relationship as well, but after being around them for so long, I was convinced the bond they shared was real and strong. She truly was his mate, there was no denying that, no matter how much everyone else wanted to. Liam. I heard Dom scream, instantly bringing me back to the present. Next thing I knew I was on my feet, running to my little brother, who was bent over in pain. His face was now red and he was screaming. What's wrong? I asked. Panicked while the guys helped carry Liam inside the house and towards the hospital wing. I followed behind him as closely as possible never taking my eyes off my brother, who was mumbling incoherently, and turning redder by the second. I don't know. One minute he was sparing with Marco, and the next he's holding his chest and screaming. I hope it's not a heart attack. Dom said, sounding just as terrified as I felt. It's not a heartache. He's too young for that and healthy. This is something else. I snapped, then watched as the guys placed Liam on the bed, while the doctor and nurses attended to him. Our parents were out for the day and asked not to be disturbed, and while normally I would obey their orders, today was different. My brother was in pain, and I had no idea what was wrong, so I pulled out my phone and called my mother, because I knew she wouldn't yell at me. Lara, I thought I told you not to, was all I allowed her to say before saying, I'm so sorry to bother you mother I know you and father are busy, but something's wrong with Liam. As frantic as possible. What's wrong with Liam? She asked dryly. I don't know, one minute he's sparing and the next he's screaming. I said, he's seizing. I heard Dom say, in a frantic high-pitched voice, while pacing back and forth. We were standing outside the room, but could see him clearly. Seizing. My mother asked now on high alert. We're on our way. She said before hanging up. I then turned my attention back to Liam. Watching as the nurses placed ice on him, in an attempt to lower the temperature in his body. My first thought was to call Nephi, but considering her knowing wouldn't change anything, but make her worry, I decided against it. We sat outside that room for what felt like hours waiting on answers from doctors. Well, I sat while Dom did a combination of sitting, standing and pacing. Dom, can you sit down, please? You're making me nervous. I said sternly. I can't help it, Lara. That's my brother in there, 
fighting for his life, he said, looking at me while using his hands for emphasis. My brother too, I reminded him. Yeah, but it's different with you he's my twin, Lara, our bond is deeper than yours, he said, sternly. I knew it was true, but it still hurt hearing him say it. I knew more than anyone how deep and special their bond was, but I still like to believe that the bond we all shared was deeper. I mean, it's just hard to sit still when he's laying in there fighting for his life. He said correcting himself, in order to make me feel better. Do you think we should tell Nephi? I asked, changing the subject. The other weirs had left to train some more, so I knew it was okay to talk to Dom about the one topic that was off limits. He shook his head. Telling her won't do any good, because the moment she attempts to cross into this realm, the council will capture her, and we will have an even bigger problem on our hands. He said, echoing my thoughts. You think she'll try to come? I asked, only because I wanted to hear someone else say it. Dom shook his head. That girl is impulsive and willful, plus Liam said. He could feel her the moment we crossed into the realm. He quickly turned around and stared at me, as if he had a bad revelation. Call Nephi, he said changing his tone. There is no point in calling Nephi, she won't answer. A man with the strongest aura I had ever felt in my life, besides my father's said, as he made his way down the hall. I instantly felt my head bow as I cowered a bit at his presence. Mr. Greystone, Dom said to the man who walked straight into my brother's room without so much of a hello. Greystone, I asked as my heart started to pound against my chest, out of fear of what he might do. Lucas Greystone to be exact, our father said, as he and our mother came strolling down the hall. He was emotionless as always, while our mother looked terrified, and the moment she saw Liam she cried. He'll be okay darling. My father said as he placed his hand on our mother's shoulder. Lucas just resurfaced yesterday and has experience with fey magic, our father said, while keeping his eyes on Liam. Justin is too cruel. Mr. Gravestone said the moment he walked out of Liam's room. He was rather tall, handsome with green eyes, and although he was an alpha, seemed a lot more laid back and in tune to his emotions than my father. Justin. Who's Justin? Dom asked, fighting back a growl and his anger. Liam is going to be fine, a little sore, but fine, Mr. Gravestone said, while ignoring Dom's question. On his word, my mother practically ran into the room with the rest of us behind her. The doctors and nurses had already stepped out giving us time to talk. Why did Nephis' brother do this? Liam has never hurt one of them, my father asked, and my eyes snapped towards Mr. Greystone who looked just as upset as the rest of us. My mind then turned to Nephi, and while I knew she'd never do anything like this, the fact that her brother did baffled me. Instead of answering, Mr. Greystone walked towards Liam and pulled his shirt, revealing a bruise on his neck and we all gasped. Is that a cruise? Dom asked, while knots formed in my stomach, and I started to feel nauseous. Mr. Greystone shook his head. This is a spell to remove a weir's mark, in other words. The spell wasn't cast on Liam, but Nephi. He explained. Nephi. Is she okay? I asked. No spell should have been able to remove that mark. The moment you are marked, it's engraved in your souls forever. My mother said, that's only if they truly are supposed to be mated, as I stated before. There is no way his true mate is Nephi Shiz, not one of us. This only proves it.
My father said sternly. He then looked at Mr. Greystone who shook his head. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. The fact that he was able to mark her at all and it stayed is proof enough. However, it doesn't matter anymore. Mr. Greystone said, disappointed. Why not? I asked terrified for both my brother and nephew. Because in order to cast this spell, he had to do something drastic. Mr. Greystone said. Meaning? I asked. Meaning, Nephi won't remember him. Mr. Greystone said. Really? My father asked, with this huge smile on his face. I just shook my head. Mr. Greystone shook his head. It's a possibility that Justin may have seen her mark and decided to get rid of it. And because Liam is the one that marked her, he is suffering as well. He said, How's Nephi? Dome asked. Same as Liam is what I'm told. Mr. Greystone explained. But I should go before anyone sees me. You know where to find me if you need me again, Julius. He added before walking out the room and disappearing down the hall, leaving us sitting there with an unconscious Liam. Liam. Nephi, I said, the moment I opened my eyes and popped up, which was a bad idea because the pain in my neck and chest was still there, just not as intense. Thank the moon goddess you're okay, my mother said as she threw her arms around me. I'm okay, mother just sore. I said, suddenly feeling as if I had just lost something important. Can you all give us a minute? My father asked, just as emotionless as ever. I swear, that man was a robot. My mother kissed my forehead, then walked out the room with my siblings behind her, leaving me in the room with my father. How are you feeling? He asked stoically. His arms were crossed firmly across his chest, but his eyes were firmly on me. I'm just sore that's all, I said, deciding not to tell him about the feeling I had, mostly because it was nephew related and I knew he wasn't interested in anything related to her. Do you know what happened to you? He asked, as if he already knew the answer, but wanted me to respond with mine. I shook my head. I have no idea one minute. I was helping Marco up, and the next I felt this pain in my chest and in my neck, and all I could think about was. I stopped talking then shook my head. I didn't want to bring up Nephi, because that conversation never went anywhere. You couldn't help but think about Miss Hill, correct? He asked, before I could answer. I can't say I'm surprised, considering the man practically knew everything anyway, so I just nodded. He sighed then shook his head. I know, I shouldn't be thinking about her when I've already decided to marry Sam, but that feeling was unbearable. I admitted, the reason that you thought about Nephi is because your bond has been broken. My father said, and I instantly felt sick. No, it's not, my wolf said. I shook my head no in agreement with my wolf. There was no way our bond was broken. Earlier today, her brother removed the mark on her neck. You know, the one you stupidly placed on her neck last year. He asked, forwarding his brow. That's impossible, that mark can't be removed. I said, suddenly feeling like I had been punched in the gut while my wolf was screaming at me to get the hell out of there and go find its mate. It can if the person you chose as your mate isn't truly your mate. He said, stoically, she is my mate. I snapped. No, she's not. If she were, that mark would have never been removed so easily. He said, in the same emotionless tone. I shook my head. I didn't believe anything he was saying. That mark couldn't have been removed, it was impossible. Nephi was my mate and even though we couldn't be together in that moment, 
I knew that it was only a matter of time before we could. I don't believe you. Quite frankly, Liam, it doesn't matter if you believe me or not because a month ago, you made a promise in front of the entire pack that you would marry Samantha the fact that you love Miss Hill is irrelevant and even more so now. He said, reminding me of that stupid speech I gave after my siblings begged me to take up this role, and though I knew he was right, I still refused to accept it. I'm not marrying her, I said, allowing the words to fly out of my mouth without any analysis whatsoever. Yes, you will. You are the future of this pack, Liam. And as such you have responsibilities and when an alpha makes a promise he is duty bond to keep it. He said, again given me that whole responsibilities talk that I could recite in my sleep and was more than tired of hearing. What about the promise I made Nephi? I snapped. I could hear my wolf growling and yelling at me to run as fast as I could towards the closest portal and jump through it. Any promise made to a fae is null and void. Your priority is to this family and your future bride. Who knows now that that mark is removed, you might actually find your true mate in Samantha. My father insisted. Sam is not my mate, nor is she my choice. I said as I attempted to climb out of bed, only for my body to stop me. Stay down, Liam. You haven't recovered yet. I'll send your fianc Lee in to check on you later. He said as he stood to leave. No thanks. I prefer to be alone. I said sternly. As you wish. He said as he stood to leave. I know my words seems harsh, but trust me Liam, when you become the Alpha, you'll understand that everything I do is to protect you and this family. And with that he left, leaving me in that room plotting my escape. Larry, why did you lie to him? My mother asked, echoing my thoughts and seemingly upset. My father sighed then took her hand, the way he always did whenever he wanted to get his way. Because if I would have told him the truth, he would never let her go. I know how you feel about the girl. I'm quite fond of her as well. But we both know how impossible a relationship like theirs is. Plus I'm still convinced that his true mate is out there somewhere. He just hasn't found her yet. My father explained. I understand, and you may be right. My mother said, agreeing as usual and I rolled my eyes. While in the beginning, I would have believed them. After getting to know them both I was convinced that there was no one else out there for either of them. But of course I said nothing only shook my head. Don't tell your brother about Miss Hill. I need him focused on this upcoming war, not his love life. Our father ordered before disappearing with our mother down the hall. Do you believe that? Dom asked, sounding just as skeptical as I felt. Maybe if this were last year, and I just met Nephi I would have, but the fact that they could sense each other from miles away in the forest tells me differently. But you heard father, we can't tell Liam anything. I reminded him. Dom sighed. Another secret to add to the collection. He said before walking into the room, with me following closely behind him. Liam was sitting in bed, staring at the wall in deep thought. Hey, how are you feeling? Dom asked. You scared us back there. I added. Have you spoken to Nephi? If her brother truly removed the mark, I want to see it for myself. Liam said, ignoring all of our questions. I shook my head no. I tried calling, but she forwarded me to voicemail. I lied. Though I thought about calling her, I never actually picked up the phone and dialed her number, mostly because her father said she was in a coma and probably wouldn't remember me anyway. Call her again. He said dryly. Liam I. I started to say until he gave me this pleading look. 
I hated seeing my brother upset, but I also knew the consequences of disobeying my father, so I did the only thing I could think of and called Nephi, secretly praying that she wouldn't puck up. Hello? A face I recognized as Nephi's best friend Beth said in a whisper. Beth, where's Nephi? Liam asked. She's sleeping. Beth said, although it was obvious to all of us that she was lying. Beth. Liam repeated. Okay, earlier today, I saw her talking to her brother in the garden. A few minutes later, he is carrying her into the house, and she is unconscious. I wanted to ask what happened, but I'm not high enough in rank to question them. I'm sorry, Liam. She said in a whisper. Liam said nothing only looked down at his hands. Thank you, Beth. When she wakes up tell her to call me. Liam said. Beth shook her head. I don't think that's a good idea. Liam you did break up with her. And with the way things are going, I think it's best if you don't speak to her again. Beth said. I looked at Liam, whose face had grown dark. He was clearly hurting only it was clear that he didn't know if he wanted to cry or yell at her so instead, he laughed. Liam. Dom said, hesitantly. Liam never wanted to break up with Nephi. If anything Dom and I pushed him into it, and now they both were suffering because of it. Right, I did make that call, but please pass on my message. I need to know that she's okay. Liam said, before wiping his face. Beth sighed. Fine, Liam, I'll let you see her. But you have to do me a favor. She said, before walking towards one of the doors, in what looked like a massive castle. Anything. Liam said suddenly excited. Find Chris for me, he's still in the human realm. I thought I'd be back by now. But things happened and I'm unable to leave. Beth said. Sure thing, where was the last place you saw him? Liam asked. I can't tell you that but you have his number, please call him for me. She begged. I promise. Liam said, suddenly looking like he had as much energy as a child, who had eaten a lot of snacks. Thank you. Beth said. Before opening up a door and walking inside, she then turned the camera towards a sleeping Nephi, and Liam slowly reached his hand towards the phone. Beth, can you check her neck for me? Liam asked, fighting back tears. What are you doing? A male voice rang from behind Beth, who instantly turned around and hid the phone. Please forgive me, your highness. I was only checking on the princess. Beth stuttered. You're her friend from the human realm, correct? A man whose voice I couldn't recognize asked, in a much more pleasant tone. Yes, your highness, we grew up together. Beth explained. Grew up together, so you know this were that bewitched my sister. The voice said, and I swear the look in Liam's eye changed from excitement to anger, anger towards the man who had stolen his mate. Yes, your highness. We didn't know he was where he didn't even know. Beth said. Of course you didn't. My sisters are quite powerful. You may rise. He ordered and Beth stood up. What do you have behind your back? He asked. Oh, this. Beth said and suddenly the phone cut off. Fuck. Liam screamed. I gotta go to her. Liam said trying to get up. No, what you have to do is get some rest. You've been through a lot, Beth. Already promised to have Nephi call you when she wakes up. So just wait on her, okay? I said trying to comfort my brother. Of course I knew the call would never come due to Nephi's amnesia courtesy of her brother. But I guess a part of me hoped she'd call him. Right. Liam said. Why don't you get some rest? We'll check on you later. Dom said. Liam only nodded. I sighed then followed Dom out the door.
disappointed in myself for going along with my father's plans. 